Hello everyone and happy Friday the 14th. We missed it by a day this time, but I'll tell you it's a perfect day to make these gorgeous Halloween inspired jumbo flowers for your wall. And I also wanted to note, these are so pretty. You guys could make this for any time of the year. Just mix up the color, change it up and use them for spring, summer, fall, whenever. So we have, Emily over here and she is taking your questions. So if you have questions during this live, go ahead and type them in. You do a capital Q that will help her scan them because I know I love it when you all are chatting and saying where you're from. So do that definitely. But if you have a question you want answered here right now during this live, go ahead and do a capital Q. If you're watching the replay, ask your question. We always go pop in and make sure we answer those, you know, within a few days of your asking them. So how are we doing over there? Good? Everybody's doing great. Yay. All right. So let's get started. I'm gonna try and get this out in an hour because I know that's generally the good time to get a live done. So let's start with our materials and tools. So we'll start with tools first. So I have here my pile of tools and some of these are optional. You'll definitely want some large scissors and I have my favorite craft scissors here. I have my detail scissors as well. I like to use my detail scissors to do fringing. Um, I do have a pair of pinking shears, and these are the three millimeter, and, and they're the scallops here. Whoops, okay, there we go. They're the scallop pinking shears. This is optional, you don't have to have these. Um, my needle nose pliers and wire cutters. Um, a curling tool, and you guys, you're the first to see this. This is our newest prototype that we're getting, our new curling tool. It's translucent emerald. It almost looks black against my top. So you guys just got the sneak peek. I'm gonna use it today. I have my hot glue gun. I'll be using my hot glue gun a bit as well as the other glue, which I'll show you in a second. I'm using this, this is, I call this a fringe clip. We actually sell these on our site. Um, they, I'm finding that this is my newest best friend when cutting fringe. And a few extra things that I threw in. I do have some small clips. I have a ruler, you don't have to have this. I have a pencil. I'm gonna show you guys the best way to cut out these large petals. Um, I, I said uh, in the post, I am not using a cutting machine for this because you'll waste so much paper using a cutting machine. So I'm cutting them all by hand. I also have my um, heat press here, my, um, to iron the, to do the, the fusing of the interface, which you can use an iron as well. I have it set for, I all of a sudden just forgot the name of this thing. Help me out here. Anyway, I set it for 360, so I have it at the top. You can use an iron, just make sure you do not use steam. You have to use a dry iron. And then I also have my wool pad here, and I use this for my desktop ironing. You can use an ironing board. Okay, that is my, I'm gonna turn my hot glue gun on and set it aside. I'm gonna move these. We're doing jumbo today, so we need a lot of room. Easy press, there we go. <laughs> That's the name of that. Kelly uh, just said it right as you did. Yes, easy press. Um, also, I have a piece of cotton cloth here, and if you're doing the, you know, if you're doing the iron on and you are not sure, you don't wanna get your ironing board or your iron sticky, just keep a little bit of this al alongside just because you wanna save your iron. So, all right, then for my materials, I have, so in the post I showed you guys that we were using this really long crepe paper, and part of that is because we have it on sale, so it's such a great deal. You'll get two packs, two of these in each of your orders of each color. Now, I ran out of the gold, but I'm using my shorter gold. So here's the thing, if you have the short, if you have the 10 inch of all of these, it will work because I'm actually folding them. I'm not using the full length for these flowers because I am doing the, um, the lamination process. So either way, you can use the shorter 10 inch or the 20 inch. But like I said, this is such a great price that I wanted to share that out with you guys so you could use them. I have my, um, my fusible interface here. Yes, do we have a question? Just about the <laughs> iron-on. Uh, yes. So do you have a heat setting that you prefer? Is there too high or too low? I know that there is too low. Yes, you really do want to set it pretty high. I have this set at 360, which is the maximum. I'm going to do a little demo here. So it's just telling me that I better punch it or else it will turn off. Um, I'll do a demo on this. If you have an iron, if you're using an iron, set it for the full cotton setting. Okay, 
yeah. All right, the rest of the materials. Um, I have my glue here. This is the glitter glue. You can use any white glue, but this is by far my favorite. I have my 18 gauge wire. I have two of my thick stem wires, a gold pen. You can use any kind of pen you want, but these are paint pens. And we have these Posca markers in our shop. So that's what I have. All right, I'm gonna move everything over here so it's a little more in my arm's reach. And I'm gonna show you guys a demo. We have a full video and I made it, it's on our site. There's a full new video on how to laminate using our, our fusible interface. And I made it available so anyone could watch it. You don't have to be a member to watch it right now. Absolutely go take a look. And I'm going to do a demo. All right, so I have this is our fusible interface and it is about 10 inches long. And I'm going to measure out a piece so I've measured out a piece of my crepe paper first. So this one is about 18, 18 plus 11 inches. So 29 inches, is that right? 18 plus 11. Uh, <laughs> math is not my, my skill. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I, I've cut the piece of fusible interface to fit, but something that you might want to note is because the crepe paper does vary a bit and you do not want it to peek out, you don't want your fusible web to peek out because it will ruin your iron, I am going ahead and cutting it, just cutting a little bit off the top. It will save you, trust me. So I'm grabbing my scissors here. and folding it up just to make it easier on myself and just cutting say a half inch off the top. Then I really do love using these mini clips. This is probably one of my fun little secrets. I'm going to stand up to do this. It makes it easier. And I'm just going to clip it right onto the edge. I'll flip it over so it's the straight edge. I'll clip it onto the top edge here and Kind of make sure that it's inside the paper. You don't want it hanging over the paper. Again, you really want to keep this fusible web in inside all of your paper so that it doesn't it doesn't uh, get on your iron or on your mat. Looks like I'm a little short, and that's okay. And I wrote on your template how much crepe paper you will need for each of your flowers, and I find it's it's easier to do it in small sections. But do it, you know, you, we, want to, we want to use all the paper we can. So the more we cut it into pieces, the more waste we have because there might be a petal that cuts here, but then you have a big chunk here. So if that makes sense. Now I'm going to carefully fold it up and match the edge and then just kind of press it down. And something I wanted to point out to you guys, if you get your crepe paper in the mail, and it's folded like this and you see there's a big crease here, don't worry about it. That can be ironed out and in the end you won't even see it. That's another reason why we have to ship it cost effectively and the really long sheets are so expensive to ship. Do you have a question? No, okay. everybody's just lots of people from all around. We've got some people from Peru, New I York, Canada, the yeah. UK. Well, hopefully you can find this amazing crepe paper. So now, just to note, if you're doing this lamination process, you do want to use this lighter weight crepe paper. Do not use heavy or, what is it, 130 gram or whatever the Italian heavy crepe paper is. Or the, yeah, don't don't use that. It just won't work. It won't, it won't, um, it's too toothy so that it won't grab onto the crepe paper quite as nicely. Or this is a nice flat, more of a tissuey type crepe paper. Okay, so I have it all folded in half. I'm gonna unroll it. If you have a nice big ironing board, it might be a bit easier. Okay, so again, I'm gonna stand up. I'm gonna take out my clip. And then, you know, the easy press suggests that you kind of press down, and I do like to move it around. This is, you know, something I think my mom <laughs> taught me when you're ironing is never leave your iron sitting straight and flat for very long because you could burn something. So I just kind of move it around. It's running for 30 seconds. You could probably go 20 if you wanted to, but I am taking a nice big piece of it. And there we go. 
the timer gives me um, the 30 second reminder and then I'll move this down on my mat and just keep going. If it starts to gather a bit, try to kind of press it out. You can also stretch it a bit so that it doesn't bunch up. And that makes a really, really beautiful finish. So we do sell this paper already pre-laminated uh, and that's what we call our double-sided crepe paper. But um, as you know, it doesn't have a black on black and we do have a similar burgundy double-sided which you could also use for these flowers if you want to. This is just a really fun technique to learn, especially if you're you know, wanting to get into the crepe paper flower making. There's so many flowers that work well with this double-sided crepe paper. So this expands your color palette. Oh, I forgot to punch the button, you guys. So we're gonna just say that was 30 seconds. I was wondering, I'm like, wait a second, I've been here for a while. Okay, so key, this has to be hot because you want this to fuse. You do not want to be able to pull it apart once you've fused it. So it should be nice and tight like this. So that is how you laminate crepe paper. All right, any questions? Sharon was wondering if you stretch the paper. I told her that you don't. No, when you're laminating, you don't stretch. You know, I stretched it a little bit because I noticed there was um, a piece that was bunching up. And sometimes when I'm pressing, it might stretch a bit. Don't stretch it, but if you need to stretch it to flatten it, that's all. So really, you, you do want all of that crepe inside. Okay, I'm going to move this stuff just so I can have more room. Let's see if we can do this. Uh, any other questions, Emily, while I'm rearranging here? Uh, Yvonne is wondering about your wool mat. Yes, the wool mat, um, you can find this on Amazon. It's just an ironing mat and it's what probably about a half inch thick, easy to find. We would sell them, but they're too big to ship. So you can find those pretty easy. Okay. All right. Oh, one of the things I forgot to say as far as uh, materials are your eggs. This will be the center of our flowers. So we'll get to that in a second. I just noticed some sitting there. All right, the next thing I wanna show you guys is my technique for cutting. And that's where I use my pencil. I'm going to show you on the smaller petals. You can also do the same technique with the larger. So when I say this is not great to cut out with a cutting machine, um, I feel like what happens is you only have, you know, your 12 inch map, and then of course only 10 inches this way. And when you have to cut at that size, you can't continue. And these are such easy petals to cut out. So the thing that I really like to do, because my, my goal would be, let's see how many flowers I can get out of all of my crepe paper. Let me put my glasses on. This is time. So I'll just use my pencil and trace around the template. I've printed my template with cardstock. So it's nice and stiff. And then I'll flip it around and I will line these two straight lines up together. Very important that you guys follow the grain. So the grain of the crepe paper and the grain on the pattern. Very, very important you follow that. You will not have a success without. So this is a really great way to save crepe paper. And I'm making them as tight as I can. And then, you know, I can probably use this for something else at some point. So I continue to do that until I have all my patterns drawn up and then I sit down and cut. Yeah. Okay, so I, I've already cut out all of my patterns, all my templates, just to save some time since we only have an hour. So I have my petals. I'm doing six of each of the petals. These are the sepals for each of the flowers. So the small one for the, the burgundy flower, the large one for the big one. Um, I do wanna show you how I cut my leaves. So I did this template a little different than I usually do. I actually did two on one. And again, the reason is I feel like it will really help you visualize, especially if you're doing an angle cut like this, how to get the most out of your crepe paper. So in this case, you know, you can draw it with a pencil if you want to, or you can just clip your template right onto your crepe paper. I could probably be a little bit more um, careful about 
not having this excess, but for, for this purpose, we're just gonna go ahead and cut it out. So I'll cut out the large shape of the leaf. And as I move around, I can just move my clips so that things stay in place. I like using the larger scissors for the big petals because I feel like I get a smoother cut. And you know, this double-sided crepe paper is so fun to cut. It's, it's very, especially with a, good, with a good pair of scissors, it's like butter, it's like cutting butter. Then, once I have the outside shape of both pieces of my leaf cut, this is where I might use a ruler. You could also just use a piece of cardstock if you want to. And I'll take my pencil Move these. And I will go from point to point. Just make a mark, and then that will give me a perfectly straight line to follow when I cut. And again, I set it up this way so that you guys could get as many gold leaves as possible. And then I just flip it over and there's my leaf. Since it's double-sided, it looks the same on both sides. So here I have two leaves ready to go. And I'll set those aside. Okay, then let me show you how to cut these. This is gonna be a little bit of a additional process um, to set up. This is our, our stamen for our black flowers. So what I've done is I've cut a piece about the width, and this is the full 10 inches. And it's easy because you can do, you can actually do three. Rather than clipping it on and cutting the whole thing, here's a little trick I do. We're gonna fold the crepe paper, just kind of fold it up, clip this on the side, and then you can just cut that whole strip in one cut. Now I'm only going to do one today, so I'll set that aside. And we'll work on this first. The next piece that I'll want <laughs> is this little tiny strip here. And this, again, same idea. We want to make sure that it goes against the grain, not this direction. We want it against the grain because we want the stretchable edge that direction. And I'm going to fold it, save myself some effort on making a really long straight cut. I'll use this as my guide and then just clip that edge. So once I've cut that, this is where my pinking shears would come into play if you decide to use them. If you don't, that's fine. I always like to have a little bit of texture on that edge. And also you can, you can layer this and cut it all at once or you can just cut the strip, whichever you prefer. Any questions? People are loving it. It's a lot of fun. You know, this this flower, they're big, they're jumbo. Um, I feel like I put a lot more, they're not disposable flowers, I'll just say it that way. I feel like uh, they're nice enough that you could find a nice container box to keep them in and use them year after year. And they should hold really well because of the double-sided crepe paper just make sure they don't get wet, of course, um, but they're, they're really sweet flowers. Okay, so I'm just trimming both sides of the edge and I'll show you why here in a second. And once that's done, I'm going to take my white glue and, oh, okay, I just lost my, my needle. This is another reason why you need these pliers is so if you lose your needle in there, you can pull it out. I did not test this glue, hopefully it's, it's working. Okay, then I'm going to put a line of glue right down, I would say the straightest edge of my burgundy piece, which is going to be my stamen. Oops, trying to get it as straight as possible. Then I'm going to place it, so half of 
this strip is on the burgundy because I'm going to flip it over and wrap it to the back side as well. So this is how we're getting that little pollen effect. You don't need to stretch it. It's okay if you do stretch it. I'm not stretching it. It really doesn't matter, quite frankly. And then I'll flip it over and fold it and glue it onto the back side. And I am, I'm going to fold it right at the edge of the burgundy because I will use my pinking shears to trim that edge in a scallop again. I have this weird fiber. <laughs> it's kind of dragging. Okay. So now I'm going to just go in and fold it over and make a really pretty gold pollen finish. I am going to trim the top of this, like I said. It's always interesting folding against the grain because it's a, a little bit uneven and that's okay. Maybe it'll be easier if I pick it up. You could also fold the strip in half before you place it onto the crepe paper, which I think would be better. I'm kind of making a mess of it, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, it's been it's been a good month since I made these flowers, so I may have forgotten exactly the technique. If I were to go back and do this over, I would fold the strip in half first before I add the glue. You can see how wobbly I am. It's all right. At the end of the day, it will look fine, but... It, I guess it's a little more Halloween, right? Okay, I'm just going to keep going, but... I just, I'll tell you rather than, <laughs> than do it the right way. And then I'm going to go back in and just give it a nice trim on the edge. And I would probably wait until this is dry. You can press it down, make sure it's... You don't have to do the pinking shear technique if you don't want to. Uh, it's just an option. I, I always prefer uh, having things not flat when I'm working with stamen. I'm gonna set that aside to dry now. And before I before I do my my fringing. Any questions, Emily? Michelle is wondering if there is a sub for the large egg. Uh, you could use a foam ball if you want to. Um, let's see, right? I would say it's about an inch and a half, an inch and three quarters this direction. So if you could find something about that size and a wood ball, um, a foam ball, I prefer not using foam as you guys know, but I like using more natural materials. So that's an option. Okay, here is uh, this is the center of my burgundy flower. I'm doing the same thing. I'm just going to use this as my measuring guide and cut it. Now, something that I wrote on the, both of these templates is you can use one to one and a half of these strips. It really depends on how tight you wrap them around. So what I'm showing you today in real life, I may use a bit more. Just do it what looks good for you. Like if you feel like it's enough um, enough of a fringe around the flower. Here, I'll show you. With just one, if you feel like it's light on one side, then you might want to add more. And that really does depend on how uh, tightly you wrap it or how, you know, you exactly what part of the, the egg you put it on. Does that make sense? Okay, so actually I, I folded this up, but I'm gonna change my mind. I'm gonna pull, put this on my fringe clip. And since I want to make little peaks, this is my favorite scissor to use for fringing, just cause I feel like I have more control. And you can see the template, how I have these zigzags. Do not use the template. You wanna do it by hand. This is just to show you, this is just to give you a guide. But if you tried to cut that out with the paper, it would be too much. All right, this is actually too long, so I am going to use the larger scissors now that I just said that 
And now I'm, I'm gonna cut at a short angle. So not a white angle, just a very short angle. And make these pointed stamen. Okay, this is gonna take a minute. <laughs> I probably should have had one done ahead of time. So perfect time for questions, you guys. Feel free to ask any questions if you have them. A lot of people have been commenting on how your nails match the paper perfectly. <laughs> I did that on purpose. <laughs> I'm usually, get, I'm getting very boring as I get older and I just do like pink nails. Yesterday I'm like, nope, we're gonna do something different, <laughs> so. It is spooky season after all. It is, and they kind of will merge well into Christmas. We're, we're actually photographing Christmas projects next week and I'm a little bit alarmed. <laughs> like what? Where did this year go? We listened to Christmas music while decorating the tree yesterday. <laughs> we did. So take your time when cutting these fringe pieces and just, just kind of enjoy it. Enjoy the, the feeling and the texture of cutting the paper. If you have a nice pair of scissor to, scissors, it is, it is pretty enjoyable. And then do you want to talk about why you didn't choose to post an SVG again? Yeah, so I feel like the petals are so big. Well, I mean, they're not ginormously big, but like this, you're, you're not going to get, you're going to maybe get two petals on a sheet and you're wasting paper because they're at an angle. And the way that I showed you that you could flip your pattern back and forth and there's only six petals per flower. So it's not going to take you very long to cut them out by hand. It's just not, I'm, I'm just not going to do an SVG. I wouldn't do it with an SVG personally. So I feel like you're, you're wasting paper and it's going to be more work to do an SVG. I know you might disagree with me, but <laughs> that is how I feel. Was that a question? Was someone asking again? Yes. Yeah. Trust me. Become one with your crepe paper and cut by hand. <laughs> I have to say, I love, I love this clip. Um, I'm filming a new master class right now for crepe paper flowers, and this is something I'm using. We're doing a lot of fringing in the new master class, which will be released in January, by the way. So stay tuned for that. It's pretty exciting. It's for beginners. So if you're a beginner crepe paper flower maker or even advanced, it's a really, really beautiful class. So if, you, if I were fringing just straight, I would probably stack my crepe paper and do more, more than one layer at a time. And you can, if you want to stack them for this type of fringe, that's totally up to you. I just wanted it to look really nice and even. Um, so little tiny things like this, I don't always feel that cutting it on the Cricut does a great job is, you know, I, I've had too many times when the, the crepe paper, because there's so many cuts and it's thin, it will grab the paper and move it on my mat and then, ugh. So I'm just gonna go in and pull out my scissors and cut these one by one. Okay, we're coming to the end. Every once in a while I might have a point that's not quite as sharp as I want it, just go in and trim it. That's where these little scissors come in handy too. So, yep, that looks good. All right, so there's that piece. So this goes back with my, um, my smaller burgundy flower. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and fringe this one. This one I think I am going to do multiple layers because I am just going straight. So I'll fold it into four, put it on my clip. Go ahead and use my, I can use my smaller scissors this time because I do want to get them really, really fine. And then I'm going in and cutting the ends first, the corners, the corners where I folded it. And then I'll go in here and do the smallest fringe I can possibly do. And it, it cuts so easily. I have four layers and these scissors are cutting through it beautifully. So if you want to make really beautiful, distinct crepe paper flowers, I feel like honing in your fringing technique is a great idea, Be making friends with it. Okay. 
All right. Any questions? Nothing yet. Yvonne is just agreeing with you that it's good therapy. <laughs> It There's is. something very satisfying about crafting with your hands. Yeah. I And I do feel like, you know, going back to what I was saying about learning, learning how to really make peace with fringing, this fringe clip helps a lot. A fringe clip and some good scissors. All right, so once this is done, this takes a lot less time since I folded it into four. So I'm really being mindful about how tiny I can make these. And if you want to go back, you know, once you have it open and you see one that looks a little thick, you can go in and um, trim that up. But that looks pretty good. Not bad. All right, so that's ready to go. Okay, now we can start assembling. One thing, this is, this is a really fun technique that I recently um, started doing. Back in the day, when I first started making paper flowers, I would take a piece of crepe paper and wrap the whole thing and bunch it at the bottom. I don't do that anymore. All right, so I want, here we go. I try to keep everything within reach here. So I'm grabbing my burgundy crepe paper and here down at the end, I'm going to cut myself about a half inch strip right off the end. And this is what I call the mummy wrap. Isn't that fun? So, I'm going to start by putting some glue at the base of my, my ball and placing this end of my strip there. Now, a, a good idea might be to go ahead and cut, I, I can't get a lot of glue out of this right now, it's a little clogged, so I'll do this. You can go ahead and kind of use your finger or even the, the tip of the glue and spread it around. Now, of course, once you cover that spot with crepe paper, you'll need more glue, but this is a good place to start. I feel like this is such a beautiful way to cover something round. And I do this not only on this big, huge, ginormous egg, I also do it on my very tiny, tiny centers. And that also will be in our new master class. Okay, so I am stretching as I go around. And what I find works really well is you go to the bottom and then you go up to the top and over the very, very point. Then you line it up to the next layer and kind of smooth it out. It should be pretty smooth. And then you do the same thing. You, you might have to wrap it around the base here when you get to the bottom and that's fine because that won't show. And then wrap it again. Why don't you tell us what you call this? This is called the mummy wrap perfectly in season. Perfectly in season, although I am going to be using it all year round. And you'll note, notice that when you stretch your crepe paper nice and smooth, you get a beautiful, beautiful finish, especially with the extra fine crepe paper. Now this is the extra fine that is not laminated. This is just straight off the roll. Go ahead, Emily. Um, right now you're using double or you're using just the single single not the double sided okay this is not the laminated crepe paper so it looks like look at that i made it i made it perfectly all the way around now if you want to you can cover it again if you feel like it's you can see some of the ball coming through or you want it to be a bit thicker you can do that again i'm going to demonstrate it one more time whoops i just poured too much glue which is fine because it will dry I'll demonstrate it again, because I have two flowers we're working on today. And as you're working, mm -hmm. Shirley was wondering if you could just tell us what the what you like about using the fringe clip. Oh, yeah, so yeah, thank you. That's actually a good question. I like using the fringe clip because it keeps it um, even and it gives me something to hang on to. And it, I feel like, especially when I'm, I'm working on a really long fringe, the paper will flop around a bit and move, and this keeps everything in place and nice and tight. It just feels very secure to me. Uh, you can use any type of clip. It can be just a binder clip, uh, but this one particularly is about three inches wide, and that's why I like this one, and it's metal. Also, I won't be snipping my fingers, and hopefully not this metal either, because I don't want to dull my scissors, but... Um, I just love it. It's it's kind of my new 
favorite tools. <laughs> okay, I have glue on my fingers, but we're just gonna keep going. I would probably wipe them off. I just forgot to bring over a cloth today. And here I'm wrapping it down to the base and then up, up, barely overlapping. And since I am hitting the white glue, I don't really need extra glue, but if you're overlapping more, you might wanna add a little bit of extra glue as you go. I just love how smooth this finish looks. Okay, perfect example here. So I have a little spot there and I wanna make sure and get it. I'm just gonna add a little bit of extra glue over the top and back down the other side so that it has something to stick to and it won't be falling off. And then when I get down to my base, I'll go ahead and clip it. You can tear it if you want to and then just make sure it's secure. Like that. Okay. So once these are dry, another step you can do is take your gold, your gold pen, and these are Posca markers, so they're, they are opaque. Just gonna make sure. You kinda need to, um, when you get them new, you have to pump them to get the, the ink to come through. Now I'm going to, I have it looking straight at the face, and I'm just gonna add little polka dots. And I probably shouldn't be doing it right now because this is not dry, so it's not it's not looking transparent. So I'll wait. But that's that's just to add a little extra detail, and you can see it here with these flowers. I felt like it needed something, something playful. So adding those dots is a great idea. Okay, now I will be adding the fringe. You can always go back and add the dots later, which we will do. I just don't want to pause yet. I'm going to use my curling tool and very, very gently. And you know, if, if this were <laughs> not on video, I would wait for these to dry a bit longer. The tips, so I'm being careful not to scrape my curling tool over the tips. I just wanna gently curve these so they're not as straight. And having this double-sided especially for these larger ones, gives it a bit more um, body. So there's less chance of it getting bent. Okay, I'll take my ball and I'm not going to glue it at the base. I'm actually going to glue it about at the half point, a little bit below the half point. And I'm going to glue it so that the stamen will curl towards the flower. I actually like to go this direction, so I'll start here. And just to get it started, I'll add some glue onto my ball. Ooh, make sure this is flipped around. It's probably best to work in maybe two or three inches at a time. You have a, a little bit of wiggle room with this hot glue. I would use hot glue for this step, not the white glue, because you do want it to dry fairly quickly. So here I've wrapped it once. I always want to try and get two full wraps and you can do more if you want to. But at least two. All right, so I'm a little overlapped there. I'll go ahead and cut that off. And I, I keep all my extra pieces because I use these. I had some extra balls left over. You can see this in the photographs on the site. And I use them for eyelashes to make eyeballs. <laughs> so just have fun with it. That will be more of a Halloween thing. So here it is, ready to go. And then once it's cooled, just go in and use your fingers and move those, those stamen out so that it looks like this. So it looks like this. There we go and you can move them out later as, as we go. I'll do the same thing with this one. I'll go ahead and gently use my curling tool. I'm curling on the less metallic side so that the more metallic, this is a single crepe, this is not double-sided. You could use double-sided if you wanted to. For some reason on this one I'm using single. 
just gently, gently. I'm not pulling, I'm, I'm not tugging. It's, it's just a very light pressure between my finger and the curling tool. And for those of you who have made comments about the old curling tool being too big for the hand, this one is shorter. So it's, it works great for smaller hands. That was something that was really important when we designed this curling tool. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing where I will start it about a little below center on my ball. And again, make sure that the curl goes towards the center. If you, if you do it the other way, that's okay too. It will look very pretty. I'm feeling a, a question. Is, am I just imagining things, Emily? Um, Donna, I was just rereading the question to understand it. She's wondering um, for the centers, if she could color it with Copic markers instead of paint. I, I think that's what she's asking. Yeah, I would say no because it's a dark burgundy um, crepe paper. Now, if you have a if you're doing your centers in white or a different a lighter color, yeah, you could use a Copic marker. But because it's dark and you want to lighten the crepe paper, you need a paint based marker or you can use paint too. just, you know, use your any type of acrylic paint and just kind of dab it in. All right, so here's the center. I'm moving out the, the little eyelashes to have that ready to go. Okay, those are ready for petals. So let's start with the larger one. I've pre-cut all six of my petals. Now on the original flower, um, I did put a little bend in the petals so that it would stand out, but then I resized them. So you'll notice this one does have a little bit of a fold. If you feel like you need more body to hold your petals in place, go ahead and add that fold. I won't be doing it in this demo, but it is an option. So I'm going to just gently, gently, gently stretch the center just to give them a bit of a cup. You can see how it's very, very understated. And we'll need six. have another hot glue stick here somewhere. I'm running out. Maybe you could, yes, could somebody grab me one just in case. Okay, so for the large black, I'm using the, the burgundy center with the burgundy fringe. And the placement of the petal, I'm putting oh, maybe a penny size glue right at the tip. So the placement of the petal, I'm actually pointing it to the center here so you can see it it's almost touching the wire. And then I really want my glue to go all the way up to the edge of the fringe. So you can see that right there. So that none of this underneath the fringe is going to show once I'm done. And since I have three, and three, so six petals, what works really well for me is to think in triangle shape. So, and if it's not perfect, that's okay, because sometimes triangles are a little harder to see. So there's the second one, and here's the third. And since you're working with the hot glue, you, need, you do need to work fairly quickly. I'm going to push these out. That looks pretty good. And then I'll go ahead and place my second set The nice thing about these flowers too is you can always make your petals larger. You can you can go smaller. You can you know size depending on what you're wanting to do. All right, hot glue, good. glue. There we go. I almost need four hands. Do you think I could grow a couple more for Halloween? Who'd make crafting easier? So I'm just really pressing that at the base, making it nice and secure. 
so that underneath the fringe is, is pretty much hidden. Okay. And then I'm, hold, I'm gonna hold the base here and just kind of open the petals. And a way that I really do like to secure my petals so that they'll stay open and not flop is I'll go back in and just do a little dab of glue between the petals where they overlap so that it helps secure them. This is such a big flower. It's kind of hard to move it around and stay on camera for you guys so you can see. But you can see how I did that. I just attached it just a little bit right here to keep it in place. So I might do that for all of the, all of the petals and I might even wait to do that until I have it arranged and in place. Okay, I'm gonna stop there just so we can keep going. You guys get the idea. And then we'll do the same thing with our burgundy petals. And you can see this one's much smaller. I felt like having a large flower and a smaller flower for this wall arrangement just made it look really pretty. Having that variation of size, um, it's, it's more interesting to the eye. Okay, so same thing. Maybe a little bit smaller bit of glue on this one. I'm not going to go all the way down. Well, actually I am. I just wanna be mindful that I have enough petal showing. But again, make sure that you cover your mechanics. The other thing that um, I'm going to show you guys about how to build out this flower is adding hooks to the back so that you can hang it on the wall really easily without destroying the flower themselves. Okay. Hot glue is awesome and it's also, once you commit, you're sort of committed, it's harder, harder to get it off once it's on there. But it also keeps things in place and it's a lot faster, especially when you're working with such large petals. Any questions? I know I'm wondering, and a few other people I'm sure, are curious when the, the new curling tool is gonna be available. <laughs> yes, we're hoping uh, that it will be here early 2023. Um, you know, it is coming overseas, so there's all kinds of delays in that area. Okay, so again, I'm just opening all the petals up and I can choose to secure them together to keep them open a little easier. That's really up to you. You might have some of them more closed, some more open. It's all in your arrangement style. And just to make sure, I'm gonna go back and add just a touch of glue right here. I see a little bit of my under the friend showing, so you can just go back and make sure it all looks good. Okay, so now if, um, this is dry on the center. I would go in and put my, my marks, but I'm gonna keep going just because we have a bit more to show you guys. I wanna make sure you know how to make the complete flower. All right, leaves, let's start on those real quick. Easy peasy, let's take the um, 18 gauge wire right here. We just need one wire for each leaf. And I'll I'm gonna be careful here because I just took my metal tip off. Normally I would use the metal tip to keep my line of glue a little bit more fine. Now, I'm not going to put my wire all the way to the tip because I just don't need it. <laughs> and I want a bit more wire coming out the bottom so that I can attach it. However, once I put the wire in, I do need some more glue on top of that wire to secure the leaf. Now, if you've watched any of our paper flower tutorials in the past, you guys know this is our favorite technique for creating leaves is to wire the centers. Not only does it give it some really great structure, but it also uh, makes it shapeable, bendable. So we'll do this on tiny, tiny leaves and of course this big old jumbo leaf. I'm just gonna make sure it's pressed really tight and, and secured and sealed together. Um, you can clean up the tip if your tips don't quite come to the same point. Just go in and clean that up. Make sure the edge is, is really tight. You can use the 
edge of your fingernail to kind of press it in and then turn it over and do the same thing on this side. If you, if you guys did my maple leaf video that we put out last month, very, very similar technique. Okay, so you can do that to both of your leaves and just set it aside to let it dry. Since this is white glue, it will take a, more, a minute to dry. All right, now I'm going to add the sepal to the back of my flower. You can see the back here, it's pretty much covered but we do have you know, a fairly large bump. I said six sepals per flower, and you might need more. Do as many as you need here. You can see how I have a few more on the back of this. And really, this you don't always see this. If you're hanging this in the window, you'll see it. I just like to finish my flowers, so if you don't wanna do these, that's okay too. And I am going to use hot glue for this just to make it quick. You could use white glue. And I'll just place it right on the top and cover the back. And I, what I'm, I'm basically doing is placing it along each of the overlaps between each petal. So it's a really easy way to line it up. And I am also using just the single layer of gold crepe paper. This one does not have a double-sided. If you use double-sided, that's okay too. It's just a nice way to finish out your flower so it looks beautiful on all sides. Any questions? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> I think you're doing a great job explaining everything. Thanks. I try to be really thorough. Um, I love, I love teaching beginners and intermediate. I, pro I probably love teaching beginners the most. I think Megan does a great job with our more intermediate style flowers. So I have, there's five, so six is plenty, but seriously, if you feel like you need more, just add them. It's, it's not, you just want it to look pretty on the back and finished. So I only made one leaf for now, and I would probably do two for each, but we're just gonna show you this one. Um, I'm going to attach it right back here on the stem, and this is such a hard thing to show, so let me turn it around. So I'm gonna attach it here on my stem, and the way that I'll do that is I'm gonna take this. This is my single crepe paper. This is not a double-sided, it's just a single layer. And for some reason, for this project, I decided all of my stems needed to be gold. I kind of tend to go for the same color as the leaf is the color of the stem and the sepal in this case. I don't need my hot glue gun, so I'm gonna move that. The first thing I will do is just add some glue and wrap my stems. And this will just give it a really nice finished look. I just remembered a step. Uh, one of the things that I think is a great idea for at the base of any flower is to add a loop of wire and that's how you're going to hang the flowers easily without having to put nails into the flowers themselves. So I'll do that as soon as I finish this. This makes such a, an easy, easy way to finish the stems. I like using white glue for this. I just put glue all the way down the stem. This is super heavy to spin. <laughs> it's pretty fun. I usually have little flowers. This takes work, man. <laughs> My fingers are getting a workout. It's worth it though, that gold <laughs> looks beautiful. It looks so pretty. Yeah, and then again, if somebody sees a peek behind the flowers, it always looks so good. Ah, <laughs> the further I get, the bigger the swing. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Now, what I'll do is take a piece of my 18 gauge wire. You can use any wire, but since I have 18 gauge, this makes it easy. I'll cut like, what is this about? A six inch piece and I bend it into a hook. And 
I'm going to place it here. This might help a little. I think I'll, I'll bend the tips just a bit so that it comes away from the flower. And I'm going to go ahead and use this. You can use floral tape as, if you want to. I don't, I don't think you need to. You just want to secure it really well so it doesn't fall off. I had one of mine fall off uh, the first one I did and then I learned how to do it a bit better. So I think the trick on this is get a lot of glue, of white glue. You can also use hot glue. That's actually not a bad idea. I'm going to use my hot glue right there. Help secure it to the base and then wrap it really, really well with the crepe paper. Yeah, I can tell this one's very, very secure. And with the crepe paper, you do wanna use a bit of white glue. So once I have that wire secured into that, the base of that head, I will go ahead and place my leaf right on the base there. Can you see that? Let me know. Um, not really. uh, so yeah, real. you can see how the leaf is right there at the base of the wire as well. And I'll go ahead and secure that in with my crepe paper. And since this is such a light crepe paper, the trick is wrap it a lot and use a lot of glue. Not a lot, not a lot of glue at once because it will soften and become mushy, but make sure you, you add glue every four or five wraps. Okay, there's five wraps. I'll add more glue. And then I'm just going to move it down the stem so that my leaf wire is completely covered. And I'll, I'm gonna restate this. I usually use my metal tip on this because I, I have less glue coming out at once, but that one seems to be a bit clogged and I didn't double check it. So you make do. Okay, so this is how I finish the stems. And I would do the same thing with the, the burgundy flower. Do the same thing, add the leaf, add the wire. Then what I was doing is I would take the two wires. I'm going to show you. How are we doing on time? Just double checking. We're about to hit an hour. Okay, so I'm not going to demo it, but I will show you. Do the same thing with your burgundy flower. Add the leaf, add the stem, add the hook. Then I just took my wires and I attached them together. And you can see how this leaf, I, I placed it in a different location. So here I have this wire to hold um, this side of the flower, this wire to hold this side of the flower, and then a leaf behind the big flower, but then the other leaf I added in the center. So you can do that if you want to, or you could add it behind your burgundy flower, it's up to you. And then I just attached my stem so I have one big piece. And then when I wanna hang it, I have so much control. I can hang it any direction because I have two hanging points and it's beautiful. So I have, I have, I had three of them behind me. I just took one off the wall so I could have it here on the table. Um, one more tip on your leaf. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. On the leaf. Um, Shirley's just wondering if you shape it and I can see you did. Yes. Thank you. I, we're all thinking the same at once. So the leaf, I shape the wire a bit, maybe move it around and then I'll take the edge and just stretch it just a bit to give it more shape. And the other thing too, I wanted to point this out. Um, when I'm arranging the flowers together, I'll take the center, I'll hold on to the center egg, and I'm going to bend the wire at a flat, so it goes flat. So that way, when you hang it, your flower's sitting against the wall. That's another really important thing. So you'll bend that wire nice and flat against the base of the ball. Then you can rearrange your leaf if you want to. Once you get it on your wall, you can also move the leaves around depending on where you need them. And again, here's the finished piece right here. So you can see how flat they are on both sides and how that crepe paper of the sepal really did kind of take up some of that space of the back of the egg. All right, <laughs> so there we go. There's our finished jumbo flower. It's so big, I'll just, I'll just have it be the image here. I'll just peek around. <laughs> Any other questions? Any last minute questions that we have? No, but people are loving the wrapping technique and a lot of people are saying that it's really nice looking. Yeah. I agree, I think it's a beautiful statement. Yeah, I think it's, it's one of those things that you could save and use year after year such a beautiful way to, and also this would be a great photo 
um, backdrop for your selfies or for your party if you have one. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you could do this in any color palette and use it for weddings, baby showers, even a, a child's room. You could use this on their wall to decorate. So what a great flower to learn. Thank you for being here, you guys, and we will see you next month. We'll be doing another project live like this, and we hope to see you there.